Good afternoon. I'm Ariana Cohen Halberstam. I'm the artistic director of Boston Jewish Film and the Boston Israeli Film Festival. It's closing day of our third annual festival, and this is a festival that has looked like none before it. I hope you've all enjoyed the films and the conversations from your homes. I want to thank our festival sponsors who made this whole festival possible, the festival's presenting sponsor, the Fine Family Foundation and CJP. A huge thank you to the Consulate General of Israel to New England and to the IAC. And a special thanks to Real Abilities Film Festival for partnering on this screening. The festival ends today, but there is a lot of stuff coming up over the next few months. Uh, Real Abilities Film Festival will take place in May. Um, we have a summer cinema tech returning with online screenings. Um, so please sign up for our emails. We also have a lot of partnership events happening over the next month. So sign up for our emails and find us on social media to learn more about what is coming up from Boston Jewish Film. It is so exciting to be here today closing the festival with a conversation about this remarkable film. It was nominated for 10 Ophir Awards. That's the Israeli Academy Award. It won four, including for Best Actor. So it is with immense pleasure that I get to introduce Shia Vivi, the lead actor of this film, who's actually a three-time Ophir Award winner. We've seen Shia on screen at Boston Jewish Film many times, including most recently in One Week in a Day and Longing. Shia will be interviewed today by Amir Tadmor, who is the Director of Cultural Affairs at the Consulate General of Israel to New England, and who has been a hugely helpful partner on a personal level, a huge thank you to Amir uh, for all you've done for this festival this year. In about 20 minutes, Amir will begin to take questions from you, the audience. So if you have questions, be sure to enter them in the Q&A section on the bottom of your screen. Um, also, if you need live transcript, um, closed captioning, you can click on the CC button on the bottom for that. So thank you, Shai and Amir. I'm very much looking forward to this conversation. Enjoy. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you, Ariana. Uh, this is uh, so exciting and uh, I'm honored to be here today. Uh, before we begin, I would like to thank the fantastic uh, Boston Jewish film team, you, Ariana, Susan, Joyce, Joey, Nisi, Marie, Ansley, Wes, and many others who worked around the clock to bring the Boston Israeli Film Festival to life for the third time with fabulous lineup and programming. Uh, the Israeli consulate in Boston is proud of having supported the Jewish and Israeli film festivals throughout New England. And we appreciate this partnership and friendship with you all. Uh, Shai, thank you so much again for joining us today virtually. And congratulations, Mazal Tov, on winning the Ophir, the Israeli Academy Award for Best Actor on your performance. And here we are. Thank uh, you for inviting me. <laughs> in this film, as well as uh, on your latest performances in Longing and One Weekend a Day, all of which screened at Boston Jewish Film Festival, and for which you were also nominated for Ophir Awards, you played fathers uh, trying to connect with the sons despite various obstacles. What draws you to these roles? Uh, I think uh, my age. <laughs> I, uh, the Israeli cinema has passed me on the roles of a young lover. But when my uh, hair became gray, distinguished gray, I am uh, laughing, uh, half laughing. Uh, uh, <laughs> the uh, director of the film is Nir Bergman. And uh, when I heard that uh, Nir is doing a film and called me to audition, I was uh, very thrilled. I, I, because Nir is known as one of the uh, uh, great directors and great actors directors in, uh, in Israel. So I was uh, willing to work with him and here comes the audition. So I ran to it. Yes, and uh, recently Nir was uh, 
uh, in, a, in a conversation in Wesleyan University, and he said the moment he saw you on audition, he knew that's it. Um, so as opposed to longing and one week and a day, uh, where you have, uh, where your sons are practically um, dead and you're trying to mourn and overcome this, uh, this time your son Uri is alive and has autism. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about your preparation for the role? Did you speak uh, with fathers of sons uh, who has autism? Uh, I didn't uh, go uh, and talk to uh, fathers who have uh, special sons, but uh, we went together, and uh, Noam, who plays my son, Uri, and Nir, of course, and me, went to a, a family uh, where we saw a bit, you know, a little bit of uh, uh, their life, and it was very, very powerful, and uh, the, there the mother was dominating, like she has she and uh, her boy has like you know and like it 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 seems like a mystic connection you know like a bubble in the reality that they have only one uh, another and uh, it was amazing to see that he listens in all the sounds and things and us being there and strange people and he looked at her and she looked at him and it was you know it was amazing uh, connection tunnel between them. And I think in the movie, uh, we took a bite of this relationship to make them, you know, this same, same pipe between them. Uh, this was my uh, preparation uh, uh, in, in the field of seeing other people, you know. Yeah, so, so the other connection uh, with families uh, who live with, uh, who have special uh, kids is the screenwriter, uh, Dana Idisis, who has a brother with autism. Uh, she also wrote the series uh, on the spectrum. And amazing the series. Sorry? Amazing series, yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's great series. And also she directed the documentary film Turning 13, Seret Bar Mitzvah, about her brother. Yeah. Was she on set and how did she influence the shooting? Uh, she wasn't on set. And uh, after uh, the, the film was finished, and we talked a bit, we, we say hi uh, before the shooting. And uh, after the film was uh, made and she saw it, she wrote me one of the most uh, happiest and uh, thrilling uh, WhatsApp that I get ever that uh, uh, she and especially her father, uh, the, the, my, my character based on him, uh, was very pleased with the movie and with me. And you know, I didn't put it on my mind when we did the film, but when, when we finished it and I got this WhatsApp, I uh, felt uh, so, I don't know if you're honorable is the, the word, but I felt that they put a piece of their heart in my hands. And I, uh, as, as I saw in the WhatsApp, I tweeted, tweeted, tweeted it well, so. Um, yeah, so it is arguable that uh, this is a coming of age film. Uh, whose transition from youth to adulthood is the focus of this growing up theme? The father or the son, or maybe the mother? About growing up? About growing up, about coming of age, yes. I think it's a, one of the beautiful things in the movie that uh, the focus is uh, about the boy gr growing up, but uh, the... I don't know if it's the real story, but it's a very powerful story to see that the father has to grow up and uh, to release and his son and to move on with his life that are uh, much stuck, you know, because as we see him in the first part of the movie, we see him as, you know, as a saint. He's defending his son like, you know, Amazona, and uh, step after step, you see, maybe it's not uh, the only angle 
to life. And maybe there are also other people that, that write about the boy. And maybe the boy can manage himself in, in life. And it, uh, this overprotecting is, you know, like very childish. And the father is growing up in the end. He made the, the move, made the step to release. And as we know, growing up is a lot of about releasing. Right. So you just said that Aaron's life was kind of stuck. And uh, you see in the film that he kind of has a lost opportunities to be an, to be an but well-known artist. Uh, you can see it when he visits uh, Effie uh, in the Shiva. In your mind, was Aaron's life wasted or his whole life is ahead of him? I, 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 I think I felt all the movie uh, like uh, Aaron at this time, you know, that he is absolutely right. There's no left, no right, no future, no past. There's only protecting, you know, like in uh, like a wild animal on on her uh, cattle, or you say, yeah. on her baby. Uh, and this in this stage, you know, where surviving is in the front, you don't have the leisure to think about art or uh, love. Even you're in surviving mode. So this was the mode of me and mode of uh, Aaron in the movie. Uh, most of the most of the film, and you see, I want to tell you something. Uh, we shoot in the night on the very uh, crowded road, busy road with cars. And uh, it's the scene that where I shouted at him and, and uh, it's the first scene that I'm separate from him. And this stays in one, uh, 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 I would say bank of the road and I moved to the other bank and then I see that he's there and I went back and I was so into it that I, go back without looking right or uh, left. And uh, uh, it's in the movie, this shot, uh, uh, taxi almost go on me because I was in this tunnel mode, you know, in surviving mode. And it was real because we didn't stop all the, all the traffic there. And so the uh, producers saw it and lost their blood, you know, when they saw, but, with God help, I don't know how I, I, I like did this curl with my legs and the taxi went like this. And you, they decided to put it in, to, to put this shot in the movie. So I was like, you know, surviving mode. I can die and still protect him. Yeah, you, you were walking right on the edge. Mm. Um, so Charlie Chaplin uh, appears throughout the film. Like him, you were a comedic actor for much of your career, most notably on the satirical sketch show Achamishia Kamerit, the Kamari Quintet. Uh, in a recent conversation, the one I mentioned that uh, Wesley Ann, uh, Neil Bergman described your character as a, kind of, as a kind of a sad Charlie Chaplin. How did your comic background uh, influence and contributed to your uh, recent series of roles and what's your relationship with Chaplin? First of all, <laughs> it's, you know, it's Charlie Chaplin <laughs> and <laughs> I'm way, 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 way beyond, but the movie connect them. The movie make, uh, you know, like uh, little uh, and very thin strings between Aaron and uh, Charlie Chaplin. And for my opinion is to bring this, you know, small gestures, comic gestures when, when I can, when I could in the movie. Uh, and the, all the look, you know, of a half bum with this puffy hair and without my beard that, you know, makes me distinguished man with my high hair puffy and without a beard, I looked like, uh, let's face it, homeless and the uh, strange person. So, and, and funny and odd. So this, I think uh, a bit touches the famous uh, character of Chaplin in the, how you say it in English, the uh, Navad. Nomad. Yeah, the Nomad. 
that Charlie Chaplin uh, brought to our uh, life, cinematical life. Yeah, so, Cha so Chaplin, of course, was a silent film actor. And um, your acting in this role is so effective and so subtle, so say so much without words. Um, Bergman also said that he thinks he never, he had never seen you so fragile on screen. Yeah. Uh, Noam Imber, uh, who is who uh, plays your son Uri, also brought such physicality to the role of Uri. Well, Can you talk about that? Yeah. First of all, I want to say that uh, I never been so fra fragile, and I, I became so fragile, and my heart was out in this movie because of Nir, that, as I say, is amazing uh, actor director. And the, the other reason is that uh, Noam, my son, uh, in the movie, when from the audition, when I uh, put my eyes on him, uh, my heart was open and melted. So, and it stayed melted all the movie. And uh, I think this brought me, because you know, I, I'm not so, uh, <laughs> so open. Uh, and a lot of actors went to hide in the public place of acting and uh, you know they, they hide the real self uh, away from the projectors and uh, to bring myself like this it was i believe uh, because uh, the two of them uh, the feeling so safe and so treated well uh, by near and to see this amazing amazing uh, noam and you know when I saw the movie, I, I saw him, saw me touching him, in, and I saw it's the same uh, way that I ch touch my own son, my my uh, fourteen years old son, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I, I think I felt at home. Well, speaking of home, uh, the center of uh, Aaron and Uri's life is on in northern Israel. Uh, I was born and raised in the nearby kibbutz, Shara Makim. Wow. And, uh, this scenery is my childhood landscape. So can you tell, tell us a little bit uh, about shooting there and the choice of locations for the film? Uh, I, I didn't think it was involving in the choice of the location, uh, but uh, I can say that uh, this, this movie was <clears throat> a, a, a bit maybe more than a bit like a journey film we we uh, moved a lot in the movie from the north where you lived uh, near Tivon uh, to a lot in the south and uh, we really did uh, bits uh, of the road uh, by shooting it and it's a j sort of a journey film and uh, uh, I think it made us, you know, as a movie, uh, one unit. Every movie is one unit, but this, you know, you, you go to a journey, uh, also physical, geographical, and of course, mental a journey with all the crew. We were very small crew uh, and we, you know, like surviving mode, <laughs> every one of us. <laughs> you're, you're perfectly leading me. To my to my next question, you you talk about uh, yeah it's kind of a journey movie but it's also a running away movie. Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of this book, Isha uh, Borachad Mi In English, it's uh, to the end of, to the end of the land. So in here we are storyline. There is something reminiscing of the theme of Isha uh, Borachat Mibsora, this idea of two people running away from reality on the train, all the way down to from the north to a lot, committing to the belief that uh, they just can confront it. And it doesn't exist, the fact that uh, uh, Uri had to go to this um, uh, hostel. Um, so, and the way we see reality at the beginning of the film is through your perspective. The father is the savior. The world is out to get him and Uri. Can you discuss this perspective of the film? Some, some parts feel almost whimsical and romantic until we are forced to face reality. Yeah. 
I think uh, it's interesting what you say because it's now, uh, first of all, I didn't uh, read uh, Gross Grossman's book because, you know, it's so sad and I don't want to, <laughs> as I told <laughs> you, try to avoid sadness. And uh, this is a very tough story and I didn't uh, read it, but uh, all runaway uh, books and movies has a, a romantic side. He is his father and son, but the, you know, it's, it's also a bit romantic in the sense of uh, running away. Like, uh, and, it's, and also uh, it has a tragic side because you know that reality will hit them. And it can be like, you know, uh, running away like uh, Bonnie and Clyde or a uh, 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 romantic runaway uh, young uh, 16 years old couple, but you know <laughs> that the uh, cinema will not uh, be so merciful uh, to them and will confront them with things have to be done. And here has to be done is growing up, you know, it's not tragic. It's, I think it's very optimistic and, uh, but reality tell them, grow up, you have to move on. You have to stop <laughs> running and move on. Yeah, so, so one of the symbols of growing up is growing beard. Yeah, so one of the most uh, charming scenes, the Aaron and Uri are shaving together in front of the mirror while dancing to the recurrent Italian song. And so I have a question from a bearded person to a bearded person. Um, later, uh, Uri says that bad people are have beards. And at the end of the film, Aaron is bearded. So can you talk about this symbolism as someone who is uh, regularly bearded? Uh, first of all, I, I have to remind, you know, I didn't wrote the um, uh, script, so uh, I have only my interpretation on right. it. But yes, you know, like uh, one of the most beloved uh, characters uh, on me, on the movie, is Eli Valach on the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, like the Mexican look and, you know, with a mustache and this archetype that you, if you are uh, shaved, you know, you are straight or, and this is in the Uri's mind that, uh, and this, this, this why we have to shave all the time. And you were very right, you know, it's a sign of mature. If you are staying smooth, you know, you are uh, like a baby. Baby doesn't have beard. And uh, when, uh, when Uri in the two weeks in the, uh, his hostel, I uh, let my, let, let my uh, uh, bird grow up once is that uh, he is not there. So I, uh, my bird won't frighten him. And the second, I think uh, it's the Jewish uh, symbol of uh, moaning, you say? When morning. somebody dead, when morning, somebody yeah. dead, yeah, you, you let the bird grow, go up, you know, like you're moving uh, from life. Now you are mourning. Moaning, how well? Uh, Morning, yeah. I hope you're surviving my English because I'm. Uh... Yeah, it's just great, I. Right? <laughs> um, so I have other two questions before we move on to the questions from the audience. Um, so the first one is that that is about the delay in the film distribution in Israel, uh, even though Israel is leading uh, the world in COVID nineteen vaccination. Uh, the reopening of cin of cinemas is uh, of in-person cinemas is lagging behind. How is it to wait for such a long time while your film is shelved in Israel due to COVID? Well, I, I have to answer this in in two uh, ways. For me, uh, it's not so terrible because you know I have uh, like I have a candy in my uh, closet. And I know it's there. And the the more uh, uh, I, I, I uh, the more I wait, it, the sweetest it it will be. But for uh, the producers and the, the, the I worked on the film only three months, you know. But they're in this journey for five years, so there is no like 
this moment of uh, going out, you know, the climax, and it's uh, very tough to them. Uh, I hope now, uh, after vaccine and uh, all the, the balagan here in Israel, the general balagination, I, I hope uh, cinemas also will open and we all have this moment of breathing. I join your prayers, your, your secular prayers. And we, of course, are looking forward to having you in person here in Boston. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so something about your a different role you had recently, uh, kind of a sugar daddy in the series uh, Losing Alice, with, yeah. a, with a very good psychological thriller that was bought by Apple TV. Can you say a little bit about this? Because it's a kind of a different than the other roles you played in, in recent features. Yeah, uh, so maybe uh, the Israeli cinema, or television in this case, uh, uh, didn't pass my lover uh, phase and gave me here the chance. Uh, but it's, you know, it, it's, uh, first of all, it's amazing. It's amazing uh, series, you know, I, I, we saw it here at our home and we, me and my, my wife, Michal, and it was thrilling. And it's small part, small, but as you say, sugar, very, sugary. I, very, <laughs> I enjoyed it very much. And it, it's another version of, uh, as you say, another strange twisted version of a father. Right, a different kind of father figure. <laughs> Nice uh, one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I encourage the, all the audience to to check out uh, okay. uh, Alice on Apple TV, of course. Uh, so we can move on now to the Q and A to the questions from all the right. audience. Um, so we have a question uh, for anonymous question. Shai, you are also a father in real life. Can you share something about how, where, or if this role in Here We Are uh, touched your fatherhood? I think my fatherhood touched the role. Uh, as I told before uh, to Amir, I used my love to my son, the, the uh, way I touches him, the way I holds him, the way I it was easy to do it with Noam. I, I didn't have to act so much, but I think I brought my fatherhood. I have a 14 years old a boy, amazing one, and uh, brought, brought uh, my fatherhood to the movie. Uh, it went the opposite way. Yeah, so in relation to that, Lisa asked, Lisa, well, she, she says, I teach students with autism and know many families who have children with autism. Um, she said that both of you were amazing in your honest portrayal of families and the conflict of independence. Mm -hmm. I was especially moved by the scene in a trade station. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not a question, but I will add, this is a very strong uh, scene, of course. Um, did you have to do it? many times to get it right, to get the right emotions? I think we did it uh, about twice and near, like, you know, shoot at it. He didn't cut it uh, almost for piece, uh, to pieces. He, he let it be. And uh, we went into it, into it, you know. I, I knew in my back, my, my back of my mind that all the people are, that passing uh, are extras, you know, that get paid for this. but. For me, in this moment, as, as I told you, uh, sometimes in this conversation, I opened the tunnel to him and you know, the world, I saw them, okay, and I see the, the hostile and not understanding and maybe think I'm a bad father and they don't know thing about what is happening. And we have to, you know, like to be true. And uh, we did it, uh, it was, we surprised ourselves. We didn't rehearse like we didn't eat. We did it on the on on camera, and we did it about twice, I think. So it was all the power 
uh, put on the camera on the moment and it's yeah <laughs> it was very strong to do and to see I was always wondering what happened to the shoe that falls into the rail. He has in, one shoe missing, yeah. The insurance covered it. <laughs> okay, so we have a similar question from Mirna and Sharon. Please tell us about the actor who plays Uri. This is a Noam Imber. Uh, what did uh, he do to prepare for the role, if you know, and to learn how to portray a person with autism? Does he have any personal connection to someone with autism? Uh, first of all, I don't know all the process, but I know that he and Nir work a lot about giving uh, Uri this uh, so accurate and precise shape, you know, the thing with the... It was amazing to uh, see them walking together and it was amazing to see Noam, you know, like keeping it from top to toe. And it's no, it's, it's, uh, he did amazing work. I, I, and he was, he, he was, he is one of the Israeli young talented uh, actors and is now flourishing. And you know, this role is, uh, <laughs> It's really amazing, amazing. And I enjoyed seeing him and to see him and me walking and keep, you know, like skippers on, on, on the route, not going too much right, too much left, not to make it too big or too small, to, to make it accurate, like laser beam. I see him doing a laser beam. Um, Jochevel and Mary also ask um, about the role of the mother in the movie um, and the relationship uh, with Aaron and his ex-wife, which uh, Mary said is fascinating. Uh, can you speak about that? A bit, yeah. Uh, she, the mother, she, as we opened the movie, as, as we talked a bit before, uh, uh, looks like the wrong guy, not the bad guy, but the wrong guy. And I'm the righteous guy and the good guy. And the, and the, I think we don't, uh, in, the, in the beginning, but we are exposed uh, to it, uh, later uh, in the movie that she has a lot of pain in her because she was, she felt uh, separated from his son, her son by my protection and by, by my uh, patronizing and uh, even brutalizing, you know, and uh, she's a mother, you know, it's, and uh, in, in the movie, it, it didn't went to, to, to the movie, but in the script, I blame her that she was uh, involved in being separate because she went after her career and she has another things to do. But uh, but uh, I think uh, as the movie goes along, you see her uh, you see her pain, and of course when she released me, uh, go to my side and give me the uh, chance to decide because she see uh, she released me, and I think. There she is moving. Uh, she also got. Uh, um, oh! <laughs> She's also grow up by releasing, and her releasing make me the option to release him. So it's good guys all over, and it's one of the beautiful things in the movie. So in this um, relation, I I just wanted to ask about uh, you, you several years ago, you had a um, show with the, your wife, Michal, Beosher, Beosher, Yeah, we have, you still have it. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I, I haven't been in Israel for the past uh, two years. Um, so did you draw anything from this to the relationship uh, with, uh, with the mom? Uh, you know, our, our, uh, it's a stage show happily ever after. Uh, and it's about the conflicts between uh, uh, husband and wife and men and women, women generally. So here it was, uh, it started with conflict and uh, then it became like, you know, peacemaking. And I think uh, if you are mature enough in your life, uh, this is the, the way things go to make conflicts to soften conflicts 
I uh, not only between men and women and husbands and wife, you know, between everybody on this planet to soften the conflicts. That's uh, our cue. Uh, we have a question. I think we talked a little bit about it. Uh, there is the interesting theme of silence in the film. For example, since that, uh, since from Charlie Chaplin's film, and also the fish, the uh, the fish and dog friend of Uri, uh, could you comment on that in the sense of finding your voice? It's a, I think that there's something very powerful if uh, you do things that cinema, this is the advantage of uh, cinema, that she can, that cinema can describe things without words. You know, it's another layer of, and if you are uh, like, I saw, I saw about a month ago, the general uh, with uh, Buster, the film of Buster Keaton, Keaton in, it's amazing how cinema, without words and face and the compositions can make a, a whole world, you know? So when now cinema that can make sounds all over and things all over, when cinema uses uh, less, it became, you know, very unique and very powerful not to use all your arsenal. Uh, I don't know if I answered it, but uh, <laughs> it's a thought. Yeah, I hope so. Um, so we have another question. We, you also mentioned about uh, how uh, Dana's family received the film. Uh, the question is, what was the reaction from the screenwriter's family and other families of people with disabilities? If you have anything to add. No, the movie that didn't go out, you know, uh, I think uh, the Bostonians people uh, are uh, one of the first the viewers. הראשונים לגלות. לגמרי. אוקיי. Okay, um, you are ahead of us. I have, well, uh, there is, this is the last chance for the audience to uh, put their questions in the Q&A, but meanwhile I will ask another question I plan to ask, but wasn't sure if we have enough time. Uh, the characters you visit in the film have interested interesting parallels or differences, the choice of Effie to pursue her career. You tell her that uh, she made the right choice to take care of her mother and your brother whose life looks so different than yours. What do these characters symbolize in your journey? I think yeah, my brother, you know, uh, symbolized to me uh, whatever is uh, wrong you know, no responsibility, no commitment, he's sailing, he don't even have a, you know, land, he has a boat. And uh, of course, through his eyes, you know, it's a symbol of, uh, through our own eyes, it's a symbol of, uh, you know, li uh, ugly lightness. It's not, I don't see the beautiful of it. And of course, it's beautiful, they're fun people, they know, know how to live, uh, he's also a good one, you know, he, he's, maybe he's not uh, so responsible, but he knows how to make fun and he calls Uri and they fish together, he's, but I don't see it, I see only the shadows, and uh, with Effie, I think she represents uh, two things, at first my uh, option to be, to love and to be loved, that I uh, don't attend to the invitation. She invite me, you know, to comfort, to love, maybe to have, have life now. And I, uh, I, I shut the door, you know, I, I go back on the stairs maybe, but no, she is shutting down the door because I uh, ran away. And this is uh, Effie, the, the option to widen up, but no, I, closed it. Uh, I begged near that we shoot uh, that we shoot in the end of the film that I uh, after I uh, release Uri that I make a phone call to uh, Effie <laughs> but he <laughs> refuses. He wanted to open the possibilities 
to the viewers not to put one on the film. Maybe, Maybe I call it. Maybe if Rat Bentru was busy, so she couldn't answer. Yeah. <laughs> so Effie is portrayed by the, by the very talented uh, Efrat uh, Bentru, who is also a great singer. A uh, great musician she is. Yeah, so uh, actually we had a recently a program about um, Emily Dickinson since she done such a fantastic album about uh, with Emily Dickinson songs here in Amherst. Um, so I see we are done for, for the question. Would you like to uh, tell us about your next or current projects? Uh, I'm waiting for it. You know, the, some uh, bit and pieces. I now have a big audition to something. Uh, Good luck. I hope uh, next, next week and uh, next year we can uh, <laughs> do something together also. We will, you'll definitely be the, be the first uh, we invite here. As I told before, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, Ariana, do you want to take yeah. it? Yeah. And I just want to mention there are all these comments coming in um, on the chat as well, just saying thank you to you and to your performance and how moving it was. Um, and I, I want to echo that um, this is was such a powerful performance and such a powerful film and we're proud to be among the first to get to see it here in Boston so thank you for that and thank you for joining us this afternoon thank you Ariana uh, and thank you Amir uh, for your beautiful moderation um, and to everyone who asked questions um, this was such an enlightening and beautiful conversation and such a wonderful note on which to wrap up this year's festival. So I hope everyone keeps watching and tells your friends that they have another few hours to get to watch Here We Are um, and be amongst the first. So thank you to everyone who's attended over this week, all of our events and has made this year's festival possible. And thank you again, Amir and Shai. We appreciate you being here. Bye Amir, bye Ariana. Thank you, bye viewers. Thank <laughs> you.